Hi, Bruce. What are we down to the faithful here? Hi, Dan. How you doing, John? We're down to the faithful. I'm sorry. We're down to the faithful here. I see. Yeah, right. <laughs> I see. Let's see. Justin's here. Jeff's here. Bruce is here. Hello. Emilia. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? Uh, Jeff. Okay. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I got your email, Jeff. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Getting it done. I'm trying yeah. to. <laughs> oh, Liz is here. Okay, she's on first. Hi, Steve. We have two. Other, we have we have two other members of the you know the uh, for applicants that come in Jim Bajek and um, um, Azure from um race hi john yes hi chris
I got Jim's here. My density we're all accounted for. I'm sorry? All accounted for? We have a quorum, yeah. So we'll start the meeting. Uh, first item is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Would everybody stand, please? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under, under God. God. Visible with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we'll have a roll call. As long as everyone's here, Dennis Santella, Chairman. Alan Kibbe, Commissioner. John Pinto, Commissioner. Lori Jones, Commissioner. Jeff Mangles, Commissioner. Mike Matthews, Commissioner. Joe Schneer, Line Mayor's Water Quality Committee. Jeff Stedman, Commission Consultant. Justin, does that get off, please? Is that, is that it? I guess so. Uh, application review, John. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Dennis. The uh, first application is uh, from uh, 49 Van Zandt Street, and uh, this is a CAM application. And the uh, the applicant is 49 Van Zandt Street LLC, and they propose to demolish an existing two-family dwelling and construct some new mixed-use development with the first floor construction or uh, commercial space and 13 apartments that are accompanying uh, by uh, space improvements that include parking, landscaping, on-site stormwater drainage. Uh, the proposed improvements are expected not to impact coastal resources, and stormwater management will be improved. And we have Ms. Suchi from Komodi who will be presenting that. And if Liz, you have any additional comments you wanna to add to that? Uh, thank you, Dr. Pinto and members of the commission. Uh, good evening. Uh, that was a, a very thorough presentation of what this project is all about. It is a, a lot that is just over a quarter of an acre in size. It's improved with an old two family house right now. And we're proposing the redevelopment of the site in accordance with the new East Avenue Village Tan Transportation District regulations. If uh, you would indulge me, Andy Sumalides, civil engineer of Landtech, is waiting as an attendee. And if, if at all possible, if he could be elevated to participant, he can describe the project and share the site plan with you and answer any questions with respect to drainage and how it may or may not impact the coastal resource. If that's uh, acceptable to you, I'd be appreciative. Please. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Andy. 
John, did you send did you send out any material on on for the items on the agenda today? Uh, I thought it was sent out, Chris. Um, if I didn't, I apologize if you did not get that. It was sent from Amelia. Thank you. Good evening for the record. Andy Sumalides, principal and partner, uh, professional engineer with Lantec um, out of Westport. What you're seeing here is just an aerial, the subject property, 49 Van Zant. Um, and again, the closest probably coastal resources is Mill Pond. And as attorney Sachi mentioned, um, this is a redevelopment under the East Nor or East Ave new TOD village district. I think what you guys have seen is probably um, the new bank redevelopment most recently. This is probably the second property under this new zone that's being redeveloped. It is an existing, you can see here in the gray in the back, two, uh, two family residence that will be demolished and a new um, structure, which encompasses most of the property will be redeveloped. It is a uh, multi mixed use development, um, residential, 13 units with a small office in the front. Um, parking is at grade underneath the building. So the building is elevated and parking is underneath it. On the roof of this structure, I'll just jump into the stormwater features that are most prevalent to this type of application on, um, under your guys' purview. Uh, part of the requirements of the new village district in East Norwalk is um, sustainable points in order to get increased density. So what you're seeing here is green roofs um, on the roof of this new structure, as well as rain gardens on the lower level um, adjacent to the sides of the building. So um, as mentioned, there is no current stormwater practices on the on the site and under the proposed conditions, we will be reducing the 25 year storm event and providing water quality one inch runoff over new ex, uh, new impervious services. And that's handled by the roof rain gardens, which will then get piped down into these these rain gardens that are at grade um, adjacent to the new structure. The property is also serviced by um, public sewer. Um, and that'll be maintained and um, the rest of the utilities will be, you know, maintained underground. That in a nutshell is what we're proposing. We're nowhere near any of the coastal resources um, of Mill Pond. And um, we're actually, you know, out of the flood zone, nowhere near any coastal resources. We're just within that Norwalk boundary, I would say, under the CAM influence. And that's why we're before you. Happy to answer any questions if you have them. Yeah. So, so you use, so Andy, you're using the stormwater, actually the city stormwater drainage system. Are there going to be any oil and grit separators prior to uh, effluent into that water system? Yeah, there will be um, a requirement for any type of parking garage or structured parking. Um, those areas will be captured with, you know, catch basins underneath the building and then get struck, you know, piped into a um, oil water separator. And that actually gets piped into the town sewer. Um, because there's minimal or no stormwater runoff that gets into that area. That's really to collect any oils and and um, gas from, you know, leakage of cars really underneath the building. And again, you are pro there is a proximity to Mill Pond, which we certainly have concerned about as well. Right. Drainage into that, into that area as well. So, Correct. You know, we're certainly very concerned about that, not just simply just Noah Harbor. Right. Andy, if I may, I'm, I may have misheard you or I may not have heard you. Currently, there's no stormwater system on the site. It all just sheet flows in whatever direction it decides to take. There's nothing that treats it, nothing that captures right now. Correct. So you plan to handle that. That's that's actually run uh, runoff from the roof and the. Correct. Yeah, more than, you know, more than 90 percent of the, the runoff will be from the roof, I would say, on this piece of parcel of new impervious surfaces. And that's getting treated by again, um, green roof areas and rain gardens adjacent to the new structure. Well, as you know, the Harbor Management Commission certainly supports 
the uh, any you know any any potential impacts on uh, prevention of, of impacts on the harbor based on stormwater management. So that certainly goes along with certainly some of the uh, uh, consistencies that we have in the plan or recommendations that we have in the plan. So any of the commissioners have any comment on this CAM application? Jeff, yes. Did, did you say that there are some subsurface uh, collection areas that would be provided as part of the, the development? There's, for, there's for, just for the stormwater? No, for, for, did you say that there was some sort of subsurface for, for runoff from the parking area or? Sure, I'll, show, I'll, I'll yeah. share that with you again. But I think that the, the question would be, is, is, is it typical when, when a, a project like this is, is approved by, by the, the zoning commission that there will be a requirement for perpetual maintenance of those, of those um, subsurface measures or? or... Correct, so, so with any underground or um, covered parking below a building or underground parking, like a parking garage, the requirement is to provide um, catch basins and so any runoff that comes in this area will go into these catch basins that get piped into what's called an oil water separator. Yes. This oil water separator actually does get connected to the sewer system because there's very limited, you know, minimal to zero really stormwater runoff that gets into that. That's merely, you know, for any oils and, and gas leaks that, you know, come from a car that are in this parking garage. Let's say, you know, you're maintaining it and power washing it and the such. That's what you know. That's that's what that system is in place for, um, and it's under the purview of D DPW and WPCA. And, and would there, as a condition of approval, would there, would there be some condition having to do with perpetual maintenance of that by by the owner? Or? Correct. WPCA typically puts that as one of their conditions to um, that oil water separator to be part of a maintenance program. Correct. So my, my thought would be, John, that with the understanding that this is not located in the floodplain and that it will result in a significant improvement to stormwater and water quality conditions, that it would be consistent with the harbor management plan and that we would support the, the imposition of a, of a condition for, to ensure perpetual maintenance of the, of the subsurface treatment measures or structures or facilities, however we yeah, well, refer to that. Certainly can certainly can make that make that as a motion that uh, you know certainly we support the implementation of you know runoff reduction and low impact development practices uh, pursuant to the stormwater uh, the, the uh, city stormwater management uh, requirements, and then again that the other aspect too and is we're mostly concerned is that they should employ certainly best management practices during construction, you know of that site you know to ensure that any debris anything that is done to that site doesn't wind up in Log Harbor, and that the, uh, the Zoning Commission should notice that the uh, assurances are in place for maintenance of some sort of catch water mm -hmm. or catch basin, uh, sump pumps, et cetera, oil grit separators are maintained. But I think it's also important to note that we, we recognize that this increase in residential density is, is occurring outside of the coastal floodplain. And, the, and our recommendation. Well, just as, as a comment or as a statement. Yeah, it's one of our comments. To, to separate it from other projects that we may review in the future where, where the proposed increase is in the floodplain, which we would look at differently, I think. So we'll bring those comments, recommendations forward to the commission. <clears throat> Have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, so move, we'll move forward with that. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, Dr. Pinto you. and everyone tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. The uh, next proposal, the applicant is um, Stacy Walden-Bass. Uh, it's the applicant at for 25 Covey Drive in Norwalk. And the applicant proposes to install a timber low profile uh, boat cradle adjacent to an existing recreational dock the dock consists of a fixed timber pier, a ramp, float, and pilings. And the work on the boat cradle will involve the use of a barge and crane to drive the uh, cradle support pilings during mid-tide. Installation of the cradle support timber will involve hand labor at low tide. And I think Mr. Bajek is here to, uh, to address that proposal. 
Yes, thanks, John, and uh, the rest of the commission. Um, yeah, this doc uh, was uh, issued back in 2003 and uh, has been in use ever since. Um, the owner is getting a new boat, uh, and um, the, he really wants to, uh, you know, keep the uh, the boat at the dock at all tides. Uh, so, and therefore, we're that's why we're proposing the cradle. Uh, that'll keep the boat off of the, the mud at low tide. Um, the cradle is going uh, to be uh, the, the outside dimensions, uh, eight, eight foot by 19 foot. So essentially how this is going to work is the, uh, the boat will be tied up to the float uh, with, with uh, fenders. Uh, so it would be tightly secured to the float. And as, as the, the float and the boat go up and down with the tide, uh, as, as the boat approaches a lower tide, um, it'll rest on the cradle. And then as the tide goes up, of course, every, everything will, will free float. So uh, we've discussed this concept and, and shared the plans and already have the application in progress with, with PEEP. And um, they agreed that we could do this uh, application process under the, the certificate of permission uh, process. So I don't know if it, uh, anybody has any questions on this. No, did the Shellfish Commission have a chance to review this application, Jim? Uh, I, I don't believe so. Uh, we're required under the COP process to send a copy of the application to the Harbor Commission, but uh, there's no requirement to send it to the Shellfish Commission. So we did not do that. Any comments from the commissioners? Is, is this doc in Westport or Norwalk? It's mostly in Norwalk. Uh, there's just a small piece of it that's in Westport, but a small piece of the float. The rest, the, the pier, the ramp, and most of the float are in Norwalk. Okay. Thanks, <clears throat> Chef. I don't find a copy of this, John. <clears throat> can, can Jim, Jim, do you have it you can share on the screen? Oh, good. I can share it, um, or Jim, if you want to share it, you can go ahead, or if you just want to tell me what page to turn it's to, I'm happy to do that too. Now. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't share any plans today. Uh, my uh, my files got compromised this morning, so I, I'm, I've got to work on that in order to gain access to them again. But you can see the, uh, the town line uh, cuts through the uh, float. <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there is an access channel that goes past this dock and then up into the uh, Covley Association dock that's uh, in this area to the west. Uh, and that channel is about 23 feet wide. And uh, there is an agreement between Bass and the uh, association to maintain their dock and to have a boat at, and um, um, stru any structure at, at the dock, um, as long as it's, they're maintained within a certain distance and uh, we're within that distance that, that they've agreed on. So, so Jim, the town line is not the property line then? All right, well, the property, ends over here that this is this is the property all right so so part of the property is in westport how, how far you say the existing structure is, is properly permitted yes this entire dock was permitted in 2003 and then i, I don't i can't see a scale on this but how 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 far set back is it from the from the extended property line uh, I can give you that information in a minute. Uh, what part of the, are you talking about the uh, the pier where it connects to, to land? Well, if you the the, prop, the extended property lines, I'm, I'm sort of squinting to look at this, but the extended property lines aren't shown. So I'm just wondering how far the existing structure and the proposed structure would be if you <laughs> extend the property line. 
Um, let me give you a rough idea on that. Are we following the one inch because 80 feet, Jim? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. I've got a scale. Uh, let's see. It looks like you're more than 50 feet from the uh, the property line if you draw us actually from the actual dock it's not the dock but the ramps yeah like where the ramp comes down it's around let's see 20 uh, it's closer to 30 feet 30 feet mm -hmm. yeah from where the ramp comes down Um, obviously, it's a lot further, you know, for the pier. When when did you ex submit this to DEEP, Jim? Uh, let's see. Looking for the date. It was roughly three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And Jim, would you mind sending resending another PDF file? Because the file that I have it was originally sent was corrupted. And then the truncated version that I have is, is, is I just have a truncated version of this particular application. So if you can okay. send me you're, you're looking for the entire application. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. The one the one that was originally sent was was um corrupted. When that was oh. not able, I was only able to open and review just the truncated version that was sent subsequently. Okay. No problem. I can scan it and uh right. yeah, I appreciate send that. It. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? Uh, Jeff. Yeah, sorry to keep talking, John, but <clears throat> My, my thought would be that with the understanding that the existing structure is properly permitted and that the applicant is required to show the extended littoral property lines and the distance between the existing and proposed structure to the property lines, that the commission would have no objection to this, but would also reserve the right to make an additional comment uh, after a review by the Shellfish Commission. That's correct, yes. Yeah, we, we, had, we had no problem showing you the uh, extended property lines with distances. Yeah, just, just to, because that that's a sort of a that's a standard requirement that oh, we call, yeah. call for in, in every project. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the review of the property lines, uh, 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 Jim, and um, comments from the Shellfish Commission. But I think we would want to send a letter to Deep now, um, but but reserving the right to provide additional comments based on review by the Shellfish Commission, That's which would be with the understanding that, it, that hopefully it won't be approved by Deep before the next uh, commission meeting. But the Shellfish Commission could all would, would, the Shellfish Commission will be meeting soon, um, and then could provide their own comments to Deep. Would this also have to go to the Westport Self Shellfish Commission since it physically is also in Westport? Okay, so you want you you're asking me to send a copy of the application to both shellfish commissions. Um, we, we don't have any. Uh, that's a recommendation. Um, if you know if, if if the the property is split between Westport and the property owner owns property in Westport and Norwalk, and the and the structure is physically located in both towns, then then due diligence. I would tell you to do that just in case. You know. Yeah. It's up to deep whether they want to they want to see Westport as well, but um, they don't have a harbor commission. They just have a shellfish commission. I think I'm correct in that. That's correct. That's right. Yep. Well, I'll, I, guess, I guess I'll consult with deep first and see what they want. Yeah. Okay, Jim. So, okay. So any any commissioners that have any other comments on the uh, on this application? All right, so and we again we can find the make a proposal to find do find the applicant you know consistent pending again the recommendations that we have with regard to uh, the uh, 
uh, boundary lines and also comments from the Shellfish Commission uh, included in that. Also, the Westport Shellfish Commission. Would, would you say no? Would you say consistent, John, or no objection? No objection, I should say. Yes. I don't know. That, you know, any anything. Yes, but no, no objection right now. Until, until we hear, except right. for the owner. Until we hear, yeah, from the basically the Shellfish Commission. But actually, mm -hmm. I, I had comments also from the Westport Shellfish Commission as well. I certainly agree with your, your comments, Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> forward with that proposal. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Nays? Okay, we'll move forward with that then, Jim. All right, and we'll get a letter out in that regard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yep. Now, is a last this last application. Uh, let me turn it off. Is an application, and I've asked uh, the agent from Race to uh, review this application. Uh, and I just a few comments and questions that we have as you're with regard to this application that recently came in through an email that I had, and I need your comments on that. And this is an application at Twenty Six Valley Road. The applicant proposes to retain and maintain a waterfront structures and 16 float stops will be added to the underside of the existing wood docks on all corners. Both the four by 20 foot docks will have no, will have, I'm sorry, two extra float stops at the center. And there's also a, a retention of a, a loose scattered rock will be removed from a 280 foot seawall and replaced. And the wall elevations will vary from seven to nine feet and will be regraded along the damaged sections. Uh, uh, Azure, you have, uh, you know, that application in front of you, but as I understand, is there any certain violations that you had in this previous application that need to be, need to be addressed? Because I don't have that in this application you mentioned in that application. Right. So, yes. So, uh, again, Azure D. Sleicher, principal and, uh, professional engineer with Race Coastal Engineering represent the, uh, owner's applicants, um, Nancy Rooney and David Dove. Uh, they did receive a notice of non-compliance from DEEP to um, uh, that requested that they bring the uh, unauthorized structures into compliance um, via a COP application. So that's what you have before you. Um, I, I believe that the, the state had determined that they were pre-1995 structures, but needed to be again, um, authorized uh, through a permit process. Uh, so uh, if I can share my screen here. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see. Share. Uh, so at 26 Valley Road, uh, if you could see here on the Google Earth aerial, um, mm -hmm. uh, here here's the property uh, existing seawall, and you could see this uh, floating dock configuration. It's two uh, sections of four by twenty um, floats. Uh, there's a well, you can't see the trees here. Um, there's a little bit of a, a small little pier on the land with a gangway two four by 20 sections and then an eight by 16 um, he had if you will um, held in place and chain uh, with chains and anchors and it fits in the mud at low tide uh, so so deep asked us to or asked the owners to to rectify that um, they originally asked that it be removed completely and a fixed elevated pier be put in its place however there are um, uh, there's a, a lot of construction um, implications to that because uh, you really can't access the area from the upland to drive piles and 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 develop the or build the fixed pier. Uh, likewise, because it's so shallow in here, you can't get a barge um, in uh, with enough time during high tide and enough water depth to to really drive piles. So um, so we. Uh, discussed with DEEP uh, and there was precedent to allow uh, the owners to modify the existing docks in place with float stops to elevate it 18 inches above the mud line at low tide. And DEEP um, has determined that that will be um, a satisfactory uh, uh, solution you know, for this particular site given the construction constraints of elevating a fixed pier. Uh, in addition to fixing the couple of uh, spots where the stone seawall has fallen down. So I can just go through the plans real quick. Um, so actually, let me, 
Make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. <clears throat> oh, that's not sure. Um, Uh, so this is the uh, property survey. Uh, it shows uh, upland features, uh, topography, as well as the existing floating dock and the seawall. Um, so that's from um, land surveyor. And then we have the permit drawings, um, which show the site, tax assessor's map. And then we have uh, a existing Kind of partial site plan of the of the existing waterfront. So here you see little fixed pier on land, gangway, and then the float sections, and then these are the anchor chains, and then you see the seawall. So blowing that up. Again, here's the here's the dock, and then we uh, are proposing to again maintain it in place um, and add float stops to the bottom to elevate it above the mud line at 18 inches at at low tide, so it will not sit in the uh, fully sit in the mud. And then we have some existing sections of the seawall and again, some some of the stone seawall and I could show you pictures of the wall. Um, it's mostly intact, a dry stack stone seawall and then a couple of places it's there's been a, a few blowouts. Uh, so it's about 15 feet of, of wall that needs to be you know rebuilt from the ground up. So, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah. Any other questions from the commissioners? Now, what's still as outstanding, Asia, with regard to this application that needs to be addressed? Now, you this this is the new proposal that you that you're planning before the the uh, deep. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. So yeah, so this application is uh, is being, uh, well, the, the transmittal, the upfront transmittal stuff has been submitted to DEEP. We're waiting for their notification to submit and upload the final application that you have before you. Um, any comments, measures? John? Yeah, Jeff. Could I share my screen just for a second? I'm sort of disoriented, but I, if you could indulge me just to share. And I stop my share. Thanks. I hope you can see this. Is this the doc we're talking about in here? Or am That's, I not sharing yet? It's, it's oh. just a blank screen. There we go, Jeff. Is this it here, Azure? I, that's a view I haven't, <laughs> so, but I think that, looks that looks, right. yeah, that looks to be that's it. That's it, Jeff, that's it, I'm yeah. familiar. This, this in here. Yeah, correct. All right, no, well, thank you. Well, I think one, one question is that, you know, we, we have a policy in the Harbor Management Plan for dealing with un, unpermitted work. That's correct. And that policy distinguishes between uh, unpermitted work that, that predates the harbor management plan and then the work that occurs after the plan. Did, did you, you said this is pre-1995. Do, do you know when? Uh, I believe DEEP has uh, made that indication, uh, um, and which is why they're allowing us to submit a COP. Otherwise, we'd have to submit a structure dredging and fill. Um, if you bear with me for one second. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, as part of the application, we had submitted uh, a 1991 Google aerial of, um, of the property that, that has the dock in place. Uh, we didn't do any further research beyond that once Deep had told us it was COP eligible in pre-95. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, you know, under this. Well, the, the, the plan, the plan is, is 1990. Right. So I think with the, 
with the understanding that, that appears to predate the plan, then, then we could go ahead with the, the other, other aspects of this. But th th there was no consent order that was required with this measure? It was just a, a, a notice of non-compliance. So no, no consent order. No consent didn't, order. Deep didn't take it to that next step. Well, you know, <laughs> I think we want to make clear that you know, that, but but by saying having no objection to this, we're not setting a precedent that other unpermitted yeah. work. I mean, it would have to be our understanding that this doesn't create, has not caused any adverse impacts to navigation or coastal resources, right? And that it, it, that it predates the we understand it predates the harbor management plan. Yeah. And the the deep has the has not assessed a penalty against this. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we can you know move forward with not saying that it's consistent, but it's we might, might have no objection. But again, no objection. Re reserve the right to hear from the Shellfish Commission. That's correct. Because you have not this has not been seen by the Shellfish Commission, as I understand. Yeah. And, and I think we'd also want to make the comment that we've that we've made before that when deep files or. or find something or serves a notice of violation that the commission should get a copy of that as well. To... We constantly, <laughs> we constantly try to reinforce that with the- We constantly say that, but I, I think we should say that again. Yeah, well, in every letter we that, that there is a violation, we do add that comment. That's great. Yeah, the, the, uh, the city of Norwalk Planning and Zoning Commission was copied on the notice of non-compliance, but that's it. Well, at least, you know, the commission should also get a notification of that as well. Would you mind, I'm sorry to be talking so much, just to show the plan again, just, just to be consistent with all applications, did, did you show the extended property lines of the, of the applicant? Uh, we did not show them extended. They are on there. They're not, for some reason on this scanned version, it didn't come through. It, there's a because to be consistent with what we just mentioned, what just asked Mr. Bajek to do, unless it's yeah, it's it the there's a leader calling out property line, but for some reason the line didn't come through in the scan. Um, but it's on there. But it, no, I, I I we did not extend it beyond, and I can tell you that with um based on this site survey by the surveyor that if we extended that line up would be over it well that's well that make that brings up another interesting I know. point that, that the existing like, flow like extends into the, into the neighbors uh littoral area and that that would be inconsistent with the plan that's right. yeah it, right as you're it, it, and the I understand that when the property is when they actually the coastline is curved like this, there's certainly some uh, differences as far as the littoral rights are concerned. Where we don't know where those are in this in this in this in this. Yeah, but John, that that's right on it though. Even if you yeah. even if you sent it. Well, just yeah. Yeah, and and I, I mean I think Mr. Stedman, you know, would attest, or you guys and you guys have probably heard this before too, but the. You know the establishment of littoral lines is is a matter for the courts. So uh, you know we can we could we can extend the approximate property line. It can go over. It, you know it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, it's in conflict. Um, well, but I, 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 uh, again, you, can, you know I suggest well, that you 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 know you you make whatever you know comments the uh, commission thinks is appropriate. You know to the state. Um, well, uh, we 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 will as your. Uh, well, I, I, but that that I'd sort of like to talk with uh, someone deep about that because that that that's, that would certainly be in conflict with the, with the plan that talks about setbacks from littoral property lines and not interfering. And you're right; it's it's up to the court to decide. But that 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 appears to be a. Well, <laughs> yeah. I I think I think a conflict. I think we'll hold off on this application. Azure until we get further information from Deep on this. Do you submitting? Do, do, do you have comments from the neighbor about this, Azure? No. 
I, I, I think I, I think we'd want to uh, seek comments from yeah, the neighbor too. I think I think we'll hold off on this application, reviewing this application, until until we get all the paperwork done. Well, I don't think it's necessarily pa paperwork. I mean, well, we, I, well, you know what I mean, Jeff. I, you know, there's, there's there's other things that have to be considered. But, but, but there's also the consideration that it was approved previously. It's an it, it was that's a correct. committed that's structure, correct. but but it. I don't know. I'd like to talk with, with that with this about about the apparent littoral conflict with with deep and see what what they have to say. Have you been in discussion with um, Mr. Zavoy on this, Azure? Yes, he's yeah he's the uh, lead on on this uh, non compliance. I, I I talked with him today, John, and I we didn't talk about that. We didn't we didn't no. understand that we're the proximity to the property line. I think we have to revisit that, Jeff. Because this is relevant to other other applications that we're reviewing, where, where we've made statements where the, the adjoining property is 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 infringed upon by a by a project. All right. Well, let's we're going to hold off on this until we get further information and and follow through on this. Is that the commissioners have any comment or agree with that? I agree with that. Well, yeah, we agree. I'm sure. Okay. All right, Azure, you know, Azure, thank you very much for your time. But I guess, as I said, if you can, you know, uh, revisit this <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to Mr. Zavoy with regard to uh, his direction on this. Or, or uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, and, and I would just like to say that, you know, with the application being submitted, you know, um, as, as soon as tomorrow, you know, and deep starting their 90 day clock, I, I, the you know I, my my thought is that then the balls in deep court to then you know provide comments back to us and and you know what you guys would be privy to so I, I I don't know if you expect me to if if there's some action you expect me to take in advance or you're just going to wait to hear back when deep you know issues their comments presumably in that 45 day comment well, period we're, we're going to be meeting in another 30 days I, we haven't we okay. Yeah, well, and I know there have been some instances where, where a, a property owner will have an agreement with the neighboring property owner uh, that that uh, the neighboring property owner does does not object. Uh, but I, I, it just it, it brings up issues that, that are related to other projects, Azure, that we've we've looked at. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I I understand, and and certainly you know if that's something that needs to happen, I'm sure. It can. This dock has been in place for more than thirty years, you know, in this in this location. So apparently, without neighborly conflict. So, yeah. um, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, if that's a, you know what is required, I'm sure we could you know get the neighbor to to say no conflict. I, I think I think for consistency, Azure. I think I think the commission would probably prefer that to have that on record. You know, since and, yeah, and and again, you know, when Deep does their review, they they may require that. As well, and and um, you know, so I mean, again, I would I would defer to to Deep's comments, and then and then you know, follow up as necessary based on what they want to see. All right, so then we'll, as I said, we'll hold off on this application, and we'll probably visit this on the March meeting that we have. Okay, sounds great. I'll pencil in my calendar. <laughs> Thank you so much, Commission. Does the Commission agree with that recommendation? First off, yes, we do. Yeah, I agree. All right. Chris. Yeah. Um, review. That's right. fine. Yep. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Th thank you very much, guys. All right. Well, that ends our application review. Uh, and since there's been no comment and we have no information with regard to uh, our standing action items with regard to the walk bridge proposal, we have not heard from Eversource with regard to their project of tunneling under the harbor, nor have we heard of any plans as far as barge. Uh, uh, settlement or actually uh, stationing of the barges, nor any other plans uh, from uh, from uh, DOT with regard to that walk bridge project. So uh, we'll hold that in advance until uh, again we hear further from that. And that ends application review. Thank you, John. Uh, the next item is election of officers, and I'll turn it back to you. All right. Well, we had we had our nominations, and uh, we had on the. Uh, uh, we had our results on that election. I was just, I was submitted and we have uh, uh, Mr. Kibbe has been uh, 
chosen as the chair, and we have as vice chair, uh, Mr. Mengels. And as secretary, we have Ms. Jones. That was the unanimous vote of the, from the commission. What was the, what was the results of the election? What were the numbers? We had, as far as, as far as the numbers that were chosen. Yeah, the vote count. Vote count, we had uh, Alan with six votes, Jeff Mangles with six votes, and we have Lori Jones with four votes. And there was uh, four abstentions. Any comments? Yeah, uh, Chairman, John, uh, everybody, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way that we should have presented this just a little bit differently and maybe we could do so in the Mike, future. Mike, I, understand. I, got you, I got your comments, Mike, and I heard them. Yeah. And right now, as a commission, we have the authority to set our chair, vice chair, and secretary. The general public is not involved with that. And I also got, I also discussed that with, with, uh, with our, uh, uh, the uh, uh, corporate council uh, yesterday. So uh, we can make announcement of who we choose, but the general public does not choose or make any recommendation. They can rec recommend, but it's the commission that runs this. We have the chair, vice chair, and secretary, and we've chosen this for the past over 20 years since we've been in existence. So, so everything has worked very fine with that, you know, and there's been no problem as far as the commission. As far as the anonymity is concerned with regard to the closed ballot, I think in all fairness, I think each member who, who, who uh, chooses to, uh, who chooses a, a, uh, a, the, the uh, nominee, I think that should be remained the self. And I didn't want to set any animosity among the commission members. We've always been a, 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 a transparent, as you, as you indicated, that we are a transparent you know, commission. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any, uh, 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 you know, uh, how should I say, um, uh, differences with regard to uh, Democrat, Republican. Uh, we, we abide by the Harbor Management Commission, uh, the Harbor Management Plan as our, as our guidelines. So uh, as far as that's concerned, everyone has been on. on uh, okay, can, can you read the full results into the record? Yeah, respectfully disagree on that. On what, how do you mean, Chris? The full results, oh. all candidates, all votes, please. Candidate just, that's a secret too. What's that, Chris? The, 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 I'll read all the candidates and all the, and all the, and all the votes, please. All right, Alan Kibbe, we had six votes. Chris McDonald, two votes. Okay. We had vice chair, we have Jeff Mangles, six votes. We had Alan Kibbe, who also was on that for vice chair, one vote. Chris McDonald, one vote. And then secretary, Lori Jones, we had four votes and four abs uh, abstentions. Thank you. So I, I just have to state for the record that I understand this is how it's been done for a long time. I, I, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this way. I'm obviously the only one to raise concern over it. It's nothing, there's no animosity. No, but I'm, 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 no, what is your concern? I, I would, I'd like to know what your concern is. If you can please. My, my concern is, 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 you know, any deliberation, anything that we do that is in a public body like this should be made public here, John. All right, That's all. all right. Mike, can you tell me a commission in the, in the city of Norwalk that allows the general public to choose their commission, their, their uh, officers? Name me one. I don't think that's what he's saying. He's not saying, he's not saying the general public should vote, but it should be, should have been done in open the list, of, the, list of, the list of officers were publicized. We had those in a minute. So, so list, of, list of officers. And we also asked at the last minute, at the last meeting, if there's any nominations that we have from the floor, anyone to make the nomination, not hearing any, I asked three times, not hearing any, we went, a whole, we went ahead with the, with the current ballot, the sheet of ballot, in which we had Alan Kibbe, Chris McDonald as chair, and we had vice, for vice chair, we had Jeff Mangles, Alan Kibbe, and Chris McDonald, vice chair, and we had Laurie Jones, and then we at one time had John Crespo. John Crespo is no longer on the commission. Uh, he is, he is uh, so we were asking to see whether he wants to re-up, re, you know, sort of uh, reapply for, uh, for um, to remain on the commission. That has yet to be determined, all right? So right now we have eight commissioners right now. And so we have all the votes, we have all the people in place that was well publicized. So what is the issue, Matthew? Well, it, it's Mike. 
Mike Matthews. Yeah, Mike. And, and again, I, I, I feel like you might be taking this personally. There's nothing personal about this. This was- well, about, But I'm trying to find about, out why, why you find this is a lack of transparency. Well, no, no, there was no claim of a lack of transparency at all. In your letter, in your letter, in your letter. To in, me, in the email that I sent, commissioner, commissioner, respectfully, if you would let me finish, in the email that I sent, I said explicitly, there is nothing personal about this. This is not addressing anything that anybody has done in their personal lives, nor in their capacities as commissioner. Other, and I can't name one specifically because I spend my time in this commission, but other commissions have a slate of candidates that is printed and public for the public to see. That is simply what I want. I do feel personally that I think we should do this in an open forum. I think it should be made more public. If that is not agreed to, then that is fine. I think I'm in my right to voice concerns without being cut off and, and just to be treated with respect here. All I am doing is saying that I think this should be done differently. If nobody agrees with that, then I have one vote on my side and we've got what? Now seven on the other side, fair enough. Well, I'll leave that up to the chair then who, who is taking over to uh, decide whether you want to put this in committee if you want to have revisit this as far as changing the bylaws. I think we should absolutely revisit under new leadership here. You, you, have, the bylaws. you have that you have Over. that Mike. You have that prerogative, Mike. And I apologize. I meant I met I, I was looking at the list of names here. I, I realize your last name is Matthews and your first name is Mike. I apologize. It's okay. Easy mistake. I just want to be sure that that you're still addressing me. I know you are. So thanks, John. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, any other further comments, considerations, concerns here before we turn over the helm? Uh, John, it's Mike, understanding that we're turning it over to uh, Chairman uh, Kibbe at this point? That's correct. That is usually the, uh, the uh, operation and procedure, operating procedure that we've had. Congratulations, Al. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm really honored to, to assume this role, and I'm really grateful to, for the trust you guys have all put in me. Um, I have no agenda here other than to, to uh, make the commission work better and make it uh, easier for all of us. Uh, and I tend to be a very open-minded kind of person, so if you need to chat with me, just reach out whenever it's appropriate. Um, I'm all looking forward to you know building on what we've done in the past and what the, the hard work of a lot of the uh, commissioners who have been serving here for many years and, and, and have served honorably and uh, accomplished a great deal uh, through the Harbor Commission. So with that said, I'm sorry to be coming in with a little bit of controversy. Uh, Mike, your comments are noted and we can, uh, if you want that to be an agenda item or we'd like to uh, put a committee together, we could do that. Um, just let me know what your, your wishes are. That said, um, Dennis, do you have a uh, past commissioner's report? No, I do not. Uh, I do not have a, 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 a chair's report, so we should move on down our agenda. Um, staff reports would be Bruce Lavallo. Bruce, I think you're muted. You don't look muted, but. Can't hear you. You're muted now, Bruce. Can you push on your space bar and try talking? Now we could move along until he gets on the chance. Yeah. If you like. Are it's you going to call in, uh, Bruce? You want to work on calling in with your phone or? 
He's calling me now. Why don't we move along, uh, uh, along to along to Jeff Stedman's report? And Bruce will come back to you. Bruce is going to uh, reconnect. Um, th th thanks, Alan. Um, and I hope I don't talk too long here, but I guess the first and perhaps the most important matter has to do with the uh, proposed amendment to the Connecticut Harbor Management Act uh, that we talked about at the last meeting. And at the last meeting, we were talking about how to influence the uh, the writing of this act by the Environment Committee and how we would, would develop support for it. And, and Lori, I think had mentioned that you know maybe we could get a, a information out to individuals who could express support. Um, and, and you know that the, the proposed revision to the act is, is was intended or is intended to address the, the court decisions um, that, that concern harbor management authority and specifically the, the court decision that uh, that put forth that a harbor commission has no authority to even review applications for deep permits, which of course would have negated what we just talked about with, uh, with two of the applications. And that the other, the other ruling was that the, uh, to have standing, a uh, commission's comments have no standing with deep unless they're uh, recommendations that are spelled out ahead of time in the harbor management plan. And of course, those two rulings are, are in conflict with the long, <laughs> established harbor management policy and including the uh, provisions in harbor management plans approved by DEEP. So as a uh, remedy of those, I think you might say, uninformed court decisions, um, a bill was uh, submitted and it was submitted by leg legislators from uh, the New London area and joined on by a Stanford legislator to, to not, not change in any dramatic way the Harbor Management Act, but to, but to make clear and clarify uh, the, the long established authorities of the Harbor Management Commissions. So that, would, that was submitted as, as a, what they call the placeholder bill. Uh, and then um, other commissions have, are all, all aware of this. And, and the Stratford Commission contacted the chair, co-chair of the, of the Environment Committee. Uh, which, which has which voted to move this bill forward and to draft the text of it. And so we were somewhat concerned about how they would draft the text without having input from the Harbor Management Commissions. But uh, very interestingly, they used the text that we had proposed, that, that the association had proposed. So the bill as written now uh, is written according to what we submitted as, as appropriate text. And that, that text makes clear that first, the commission may review and make recommendations consistent with the Harbor Management Plan on any application for a permit or license to be issued by the state. So that, that, that would deal with that, that first court decision of concern that the commission has no legal authority to review applications. And then the, the, the second part is that any recommendation of the commission now, that, that's a distinction between a recommendation of the plan. Any recommendation of the commission that is consistent with and supported by the content of the plan with respect to any application shall be binding on DEEP or any other state agency when making regulatory decisions, unless DEEP shows cause in writing why, why they take a different action. So that, that, that proposed bill addresses the concerns that, that, that we had. And as things are moving very quickly, a public hearing on this bill is scheduled for this coming Monday. So we're try trying to organize other harbor management commissions to have representatives that either testify in person, which can be done by via the computer, or submit written comments. So the, the Harbor Management Association, which John is the president, will be getting this, this information out to all of, all of the commissions. And I... I would look, I'm looking forward to, to testifying on, on, uh, on Monday. And again, I think that we have to thank for this, the, the mayor of New London, Mayor Passero and the New London delegation, and also the uh, represent one, at least one of the representatives from Stanford who signed on to this bill. So I guess there'll be more to come and that, that, that will certainly clarify and, and it will eliminate <laughs> You know the, the the unfortunate situation that we ran into, where where the DEP hearing officer, with respect to our comments on the walk bridge, ruled that our comments had no special standing other than that of the general public, 
and in, in addition ruled that uh, that they weren't they didn't have standing in part because there's no recommendation in the harbor management plan having to do with monitoring water quality when the walk bridge is replaced which of course is a sort of a silly thing to say but so that that's part of that's the first part of my report um, I'm sorry to go on for so long um, the, the other part or an, an other part um, this afternoon at the meeting of the Norwalk River watershed initiative which is which is different from the association. The initiative is, is a government supported, DEP supported uh, initiative of, of, of the seven watershed towns. But there was a, disc, a presentation concerning the Long Island Sound Coastal Zone Soil Survey Project by the Federal Natural Resources Conservation Service. So th this is a project that's, that's, that's taking uh, cores and borings of near shore waters and, and uh, intertidal areas along, along the shoreline. And one of the areas that they're going to be surveying is, is Norwalk Harbor. And, and so the, the purpose of this survey, uh, which is federally funded, is to develop information that can be used to plan resiliency projects or wetland restoration projects and, and to understand the, the and, and Joe, Joe Schneerlein, I don't, see him anymore on the, oh, there he is. He, he can add, add to this too. Um, so we, we asked if, um, well, we, first of all, we talked about the area south of Veterans Park, which, which due to the, result, the efforts of this commission and the Shellfish Commission is identified as a, as a priority area for shellfish habitat enhancement in the state shellfish restoration plan. So we asked if, if this person who, from the, NRCS who gave the presentation today, if they could take samples in that particular area, we'd learn more about the, the substrate and it might help us with our grant application next year for, for funds to uh, plant oysters there and, and, and monitor the effect of the, of the oysters. So I thought that was, that was a, a good thing too. Um, and then the other thing, the other issue, and I, I did talk with, with Mr. Zavoy who is the chief enforcement officer for DEEP uh, about just what we talked about tonight, although not with respect to this particular project. Um, when, when there are violations uh, that, that the commission should be, should be made aware of them, but also when, when there are reports of violations or, or members of the public ask questions or, or, or point out areas that where there may be violations, it's not the Harbor Commission's authority to determine if, if there are, but, but it, it's DEEP's authority as, as, the, uh, as the, well, they are the authority for determining. So if there are questions come up about whether a particular structure is in violation, I, we were talking today that, that the, the proper approach would be for, for the commission to request a deep, DEEP to make a determination. As we as we've done in, in the past in other locations, but but the that the authority is clearly deep with respect to any violations of, of state regulatory programs. So he's 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 aware that we may we may wish to <laughs> ask him to make determinations if we if we get reports of work that's that, that's alleged to be in, in violation. So th th that's the three parts of my report, Alan. Any questions, anyone? Jeff? Thanks, Jeff. Let me just chime in. So I went to the, um, the what do you call it? The legislators uh, meeting at City Hall going back two, three weeks now and um, handed, and so all of the Nor Norwalk delegation was there as well as Senator Duff. Um, I, I made, a, I, 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 during the public speaking part, I got up and basically, um, you know, using the, the, the thing John sent around as a script sort of described what the issue was, um, as we've discussed it here and, and then, and handed out the, the press release. It was also part of the, um, the Harbor Management Association, um, uh, press release that, so, so that was given to all of our delegates. None of, none of the Norwalk delegates are members of the environmental, um, committee. So that doesn't help us either draft it or get it out of committee. But, um, you know, if, if it does get out of committee, then it obviously will go to the full assembly for vote. And, um, and, and people were very, 
very supportive in general, both in the public and in the, of the delegation for, you know, the, the case that we're all making for this that I presented to them. Chris, I don't think they have to be a member of the environmental committee. They, all they can do is certainly endorse it. Yeah, but the, well, the environmental committee drafts it and then they have to pass it before it goes to the general assembly. Anybody can tag their name on it, of course. Right. That's correct. And, that's and they, that's of, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's getting it out of committee and getting it on, getting and, and getting it brought to the general assembly for a vote. That's, you know, that's where mo most bills die in a committee. So we're so hoping trying to get a little bit more uh, force behind that by having other delegations sort of. Sure, uh, that all helps. That all helps. Um, and, and the other, yeah, mun other municipalities have managed to do that. Yeah. So is there, gentlemen, is there, is there any action plan we should take as a commission? Well, hopefully on Monday, we're going to have, uh, actually have, uh, Jeff is going to be serving as a spokesperson on behalf of the Connecticut Harbor Management Association, and also as a representative for Greenwich, Stratford, Fairfield, so that we don't get too many, um, you know, too, too many, too many voices, uh, you know, at once, with, you know, and, and just overpowering what, what we want to do, basically. We, we also, there's also, a, in response to Chris, it, it, it is, it's moved out of the committee to the extent that they've agreed to move it forward to drafting the bill and also having a public hearing on, on the drafted bill, as, as I read parts of it. So that, that we were concerned that they might not move it out of the, of the committee to that, but they, but they have. So if, if I, I, I know in the past that, 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 the, that you all have Express support for an amendment of the Harbor Management Act to to address the concerns that we've talked about. So if I if I testify along and, and there are others you know from other commissions too, but if I if if I have permission to say I'm I'm also expressing the support of the Norwalk Harbor Management Commission for for this draft bill, then I, then I can do that with the understanding that the commission would be submitting written comments as as well, which we don't have to submit by Monday. That's correct. We can submit those later. Right. Is it a commission hearing or it's, it's, is it a com sorry, uh, the environmental committee hearing? It's, it's a public hearing, just like they have on all the. Sure, but it, is, it, is it a committee meeting? Or it's a committee. I would, I would assume it's a committee hearing, right? Introduced by the environment committee. And the, um, well, I can I can read that. I'm assuming if the environment committee is holding the public hearing. It's right. So it's not out of committee yet. That's what I was just trying to understand. No, they're holding the public meeting for that. The committee has taken up the bill, but it has not out. It's not out of the committee yet. Okay. No, that's correct. All right, that's all good news. Great. Alan, can I throw two two cents in? Certainly, Joseph. Thank you. Another another avenue to try. Christine Cohen was was the chairman co chair of the environmental committee but she's been reassigned to the Department of Transportation. Since our harbor, um, a lot of what we think about is transportation. Why aren't we going to the Department of Transportation? She might be a more sympathetic ear because she understands the environment and now she's put in charge of the Transportation Committee. And it might be another way of getting legislation I don't know how that works. Uh, you know, a bill has already been submitted, Joe, uh, to yep. the environmental committee. Okay. That's the avenue that we were told to, uh, to take. And you're not allowed to submit it to more than one committee? That I don't know. No. All right, I think uh, we should move on. I think that uh, Jeff will testify on Monday and we'll... Well, Jeff, you were representing, just as a, just a, for the record, you're representing, you have the, the, the uh, at least all the commissioners agree to represent Norwalk. You represented the Connecticut Harbor Management Association, Greenwich, Stanford, Fairfield, Stratford. Which others? New, New London and Norwich. Norwich, that's correct. So I thought that's certainly uh, enough backing. And then plus the Connecticut Harbor Management Association represents 21 commissions in the state. Should we have a show of hands or a motion that we authorize Jeff to represent the commission at this uh, hearing? 
Aye. Everyone agree to that, commissioners? Aye. So Jeff, you you uh, you have our blessing. Thank you. And then, Joe, who who did who did you say with the the, the legislator you mentioned? Before? Christine Cohen. That's what she was. Cohen. Yeah. She was the former. She was the former chair, I believe, Joe. Right. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She. Yeah. She's no longer there. That's correct. And she's now in in charge of the transportation department. Moving right along, uh, Bruce, are, we, are you connected now? You're still muted. You're muted. <laughs> can you can you call into the meeting from the uh, instructions on the? Uh, call to meeting from uh, Amelia. First time you've ever been speaking. He, he is calling uh, from his phone actually now. Uh, he's unmuted, it looks like. Turn the volume up. <laughs> well, now, now it looks like he's muted again. Jeff, maybe he can call you and you can give his report. Alan, call Alan. Alan, this speaks to our comments that we had yesterday at the. Yes, uh, it does. To have our yeah, meeting. Absolutely. We need to see if we can get our, our meeting back in, in order. I, I, um, I would vote back for in that. person. Uh, uh, Bruce, I'm going to put you on hold and we'll uh, move on to Stephen. Steve Bartish, please, for Selfish Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on your appointment, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, the selfish, you're welcome. The Office Commission only had uh, one application, just the continuation and finalization of the Roten Point Association um, application to extend a boat ramp, um, which the Selfish Commission had an um, unfavorable um, consultation and that's been submitted to the state. Um, nothing really more. Thanks, uh, Mr. Stedman, for the important news tonight. This is uh, as big as anything that's uh, happened since I've been involved uh, as a volunteer. Uh, permits are on sale at Fisherman's World, Eat Narwhal, Shellfish, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Steve. Uh, committee reports would be mooring and harbor safety. Dennis. Yes, uh, the renewal applications continue this season, and the committee will address an issue any, any concerns. Uh, we continue to communicate with the Harbor master, although it's better than tonight, <laughs> any concerns or issues. <laughs> and uh, Harbor under Harbor safety, the committee is not aware of any issues or concerns. And I believe Officer Basiglia is on a board with us. And I wonder if he has any information for the Harbor or any Harbor issues. Officer Basiglia. How are you doing guys, hear me? Yes, Bruce. Yeah. Just, just wondering um, if you have any any information on the harbor safety. No, nothing going on at our end. Everything is uh, pretty quiet. Um, Mr. Stepman and I are working together to work on getting the uh, permitting done for the speed buoys and kind of just increasing the visibility of those in the harbor. Um, that's ongoing, and I should have those um, desired locations back to him in the next day or two, and then we can do keep moving forward with that permitting process. Great. I'll okay, say that Dennis. That that Dennis? Yeah, that's that all I got. Thanks, Dennis. Um, oh, it's it's the finance uh, report. Uh, we've had very little change in our financial situation since the uh, last report. We've had uh, paid two months of uh, the uh, Harbor Masters uh, stipend, and that's really the only change we've had there. Um, I sent around two invoices from uh, Jeff Stedman, consultant Stedman, one for his time July 1st through September 30th and the other from October 1st to December 31st. Um, I expect you've had a, a, a moment or two to, to glance at those. Is there any, uh, do we have a motion to uh, authorize payment for that? 
I'll move the motion, Mr. Chairman. And I'll second. second. Thank you, Lori. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Mangles, plans and recommendations. Whoops. There you go. Um, so don't have any plans or rec anything under plans and recommendations, except for the fact that uh, I reached out to Tim Delgado and Pete Franci again. Uh, this is in regards to the abandoned uh, derelict vessel issues and how to deal with that there with uh, deep uh, to get that passed through them. Uh, there is a it's, it's very sensitive on how to do that. And when you take control of a vessel and who owns that vessel. And the last time we did that, it cost us sixty five hundred dollars. So we don't want to do that again. Uh, if we can uh, avoid that. Uh, I've also sent out the flow chart of how to deal with, with that and who to call uh, to Officer Bas Basigli. Sergeant. I'm sorry, Sergeant Basigli. Now sorry you heard me, Justin. right? Now you got <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Now we can hear you. That's now all I need. All of a sudden, I get boarded every single time I go out there. <laughs> so, um, you know, life fest and all of that. And, <laughs> uh, so, so Sergeant Basigli, I, I handed that off to, uh, just, uh, in the interim, just in case something happens and, and how to deal with that. Um, other than that, I don't have anything, uh, other than that right now. So. Mr. Question, Mr. Chairman, Jeff, thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I jump in now? Any questions for Jeff? If not. Officer Lavallo. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. No. Holy cow. <laughs> um, quick couple things. Um, to this day, I have about uh, 60 people who paid for their for their moorings for this season. Um, I spent a few hours with Norm Edwards. We're kind of in line with uh, what moorings need inspections, and those notices uh, have gone out to the to those mooring um, owners. Um, so he's gonna start checking moorings as soon as, soon as this weather breaks, probably another week. Um, uh, online mooring. Um, I spent a lot of time um, with a representative with online mooring and, it, and to get to the chase on the online mooring um, website, you know, we have renewal under review, application under review, renewal incomplete, expired, rejected, canceled. And what, what was happening when, when someone pays for their mooring, um, I go in and then I go to their, to the payment part of, of the website. And I actually, you know, if they have a 20 foot boat, I make sure that they paid for that for that 20 foot boat sometimes because of that person applied an application like four times within the system it, it doesn't calculate it right so it, it'll just put five bucks so i have to ch i have to check each individual if if you guys understand so that's because under all these different reviews application renewal they might have been checked off or rejected so i have to go go through with them to figure out how to cancel out all these multiple um applications basically so we're on a roll with that we're we're pretty good um i went from like 200 um renewal incomplete i'm down to like nine um I have one person that um, who uh, needed an inspection for a mooring. I've been after them for the last three years. Um, their mooring, one of their lines broke loose in the East Channel. Um, I called them about it. They fixed it, but I don't know who he had fixed. Who 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 did it? I don't I don't know. Um, 
So what's happening is I talked to Norm Edwards. I'm pulling that mooring. Um, I'm going to send him a notice. It's going to be pulled. Have Norm Edwards is going to check it, and he'll have to deal with with the owner of the mooring. Um, let's see. Bruce, Bruce, if I can ask a question, please. Yep. You, we we give the applicants a list of names of individuals that do mooring inspections, correct? It's on the online mooring website, yes. Okay, that's right. Thank you. Yes. Um, we're even, trying to approve that, no, John. Even, we're, trying to get, we're trying to get another inspector or two, if we can. We have two now, yeah. and, and Bruce is, knows of another one. So yeah, well, he's on that, 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 list. Person, that person's on the online mooring system now. We, uh, Jen okay. put them up. Um, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I don't know if, if Chris is going to talk about, um, or Alan going to talk about the Amistad, but I had a Rich Wall reach out to me. We chatted a little bit. Um, he kind of updated me also. And Chris has sent me an email. Of, of that last meeting, which I, I'm sorry, I couldn't make. But we just talked about um, Anchorage. Um, there may be like a day, a day to three days of, instead of um, bringing a ship down to get ready to come into the Noah Harbor, they don't want to go back to New Haven. So he, he was just requesting or asking if, if the Amistad could be um, anchored somewhere off of Norwalk or maybe in front of Sheffield Island, which I don't, I don't see a problem. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss that more when, when we start getting close to that. And then Sergeant Basigli brought up about the five mile an hour buoys, you know, and, and with Jeff, Jeff Stedman's help, helping him with that. That's a wrap. You want to talk about uh, Dockwag, all that? Um, I haven't really read the email yet. I know I, I got it, but the, but the DACWA, um is hopefully going to be up and running for, for at least for those two transit moorings in, in the East Channel. Um, uh, I talked to Norm Edwards. I'm, we're, we're trying to work something out because I had almost nine abandoned moorings pulled. Um, so we're going to see what what we could work out for some for 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 weights and maybe put three three transit moorings out among the islands so we can advertise that and, and have a draw come in. Terrific. Just for the record, we uh, the, the our DACWA account was approved by the Common Council thanks to a lot of help from, from uh, committees. And uh, we've, uh, the DACWA folks reached out to Bruce and myself to sort of get started on sort of setting up the app for that. Um, we should get uh, the mooring and safety committee involved in that process because it's it's it should it's part of moorings and all. Um, but we're moving forward with that, which I think is a great uh, a great step. And it's been it's been a kind of a long road. So I, Bruce and I are both looking forward to getting that getting that uh, up and running. Alan, are you good, Bruce? I'm Any good. Questions? I, I, Alan, may I ask uh, Bruce a question on our? Sure. Uh, Bruce, I thought I thought all the bugs have been worked out of our online mooring system. Is there a, is that a glitch in the online mooring system itself? It, no, it, it the glitch is that the glitch is multiple people when when they try to get on they can't get on on their on their reference number. What they do is they they reapply instead of calling me and say hey I need I need help or I can't get on. They reapply and do a whole new application, and that ties up the system basically. But isn't that's that only one part of it? That's only one part of it. Bruce. Isn't that a problem with the online mooring system itself? I mean, the, the people that had set up the program isn't that, that was their responsibility to make sure that that's an redundancy anyway? Well, I've been, I've been. If, let me give you an but, example. I've been talking to them for years mm -hmm. regarding the. They have a. They have a, a symbol. Uh, approach very basic before you even get into the application. And the first symbol is payment. And there's always green. So I said, why is it always green? I go into the application and the guy owes me money, owes us money. He says, well, because they paid before. I said, well, it doesn't make any sense. 
because then yes. go into every single application to find out what they're missing. But I haven't been able to to get those people it's, to wrap that yeah, around. They don't it's understand. very it's very time consuming. It, Trust very, me. it really is. Gentlemen, I, I appreciate Bruce's work because he's they're getting they're getting taking a lot of gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, this ought to Stein. be ought to be committee work. You know, uh, yeah. rather I, the whole commission. I think we don't need to. I agree, but it's just we tie everybody up with this. Quite a bit of money to get this program on on you know ongoing, and it's up to that company to be responsible to what our needs are. Right. Um, I. I Dennis, that's up to the that's to the committee to to yeah. uh, push forward. Oh, yeah, I don't case. disagree. It's I, just... Yeah, I was told by them that I guess there's a fee that that they charge for basically for like online help. I, I have one individual that that's been helping me kind of kind of on the side. So, but I I told him I didn't know anything about you know a fee that to uh, to manage that system because I already thought that that's what they do. So could your committee, uh, Dennis, take take that up and and work on those issues with the Harbor Master? Of course, of course. We're, we've been talking about it for a while. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> we have. Uh, or, come one, up or, or if we need some some kind of clout to get that uh, moving forward, we just need to, uh, need to do that. Uh, and then uh, one other thing is uh, is the uh, an applicant that that submitted a, a resume for uh, a deputy Harbor Master. So I don't know if if Commissioner Pinto is going to put that resume around, or yeah, I was going to bring that up at, at New okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, um, Mr. Matthews. Yeah, thank you, Chairman Kivy. Uh, so, a couple updates here. The newsletter finally going to get rolling here. It, it looks like it years past and. Uh, thanks to your assistance, <laughs> your Chair Kibbe, with the uh, the files from uh, old newsletters. It looks like it was a winter, uh, there, there was a winter newsletter used to go out, and then one, I, I don't know, it alternated between different times of year. I'm wondering if everybody's okay with a spring and then maybe a fall newsletter. We could even do a early spring and kind of a summer newsletter, um, but we can draft that up pretty fast now that we have the shape files. Uh, I'll show a kind of two-pager to everybody, uh, hopefully by next meeting. Uh, by the time everybody's out and wanting to vote around, we can have some updates to the general public about what we're doing. Uh, so again, appreciate your help with that. Uh, Facebook's a little weird. Uh, the the a gentleman, I, I don't want to name him here in a public forum, so I'll send it to you, Alan, but somebody had, still has control over our Facebook page. Uh, and so every time I post, it will come back and say rejected. Uh, so I tried to put up last oh. week, uh, yeah, a, 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 an article, and days later it came back and said we, we can't accept this. And then uh, I also tried I... to, I also tried to put up public notice about this meeting and didn't happen. So hopefully the third time's a charm, uh, and we'll get that rolling moving forward. Uh, kind of a tangential uh, newsletter communications thing. I uh, thank you to Jeff Stedman for for the conversations we've had in the back and forth about the. Uh, Oyster Town Initiative, the Oyster Trail, uh, that is very much uh, something that I will uh, show to the larger group after we get all of the uh, the rings kissed, so to speak, and all the, all of my permission slips signed. I want to make sure everybody's happy and everybody sees it before I bring it to the larger uh, commission. So happy to get any questions, concerns, advice on, on how to better communicate. Mike. Yes, sir. Can I can I uh, email you pictures and stuff once you get that Facebook up and running? Instead of yeah, doing, instead of doing my own thing, how I was doing it, I just you know rather have it come from the Harvard Commission overall. You know, messages from yeah. the Harvard. You know, yeah, let's let's do that. That would be great. I actually think your stuff should be uh, probably the most prominently used. You know, kind of posts, right? Yeah. Let everybody know I'm coming. I'm gonna pull your. Uh, yeah, and it'll pull you off the mooring if you're not paying. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Schneerlein. You done, Newt? See, it's not only me. <laughs> you muted, Joe. We had an interesting meeting with save the sound um 
they they came with the representative and when I started when we started doing his presentation um the the meeting ended up going much longer because there were a lot of questions the bottom line was why they gave us a poor grade in the upper harbor um they stuck to their guns with it's all data driven and i pointed out to the people that give the grades do the sampling the answer was no definitively no they have people at yukon that sit down and look at the data that's sent to them, but they do not look at the weather. They do not look at the rainfall. They do not look at uh, other mitigating circumstances such as large schools of bunker getting into water that is already 73, 74, or 75 degrees where the oxygen level is already low and they're gonna suffocate themselves. And I, I push back as well as other people. And I said, hey guys, I mean, this is ridiculous. These are natural conditions. You're failing us because of natural conditions. And Jeff pushed back after we hit him with that and asked about uh, the consent order. And what a great tap dance, right, Jeff? He's smiling. Um, we didn't get a good answer on that. He, he said he, he wasn't at liberty to discuss everything. So in essence, you know, what I, I said to Peter afterwards, I, I said, look, um, if you publish that again, we'll push back and, and we'll tell the public that you're providing a grade based on information that is only partially driven by science. It's not totally driven by science, like you claim. Um, and that was, that was the major part of the meeting and, and to follow up on, on Jeff's presentation on, um, the soil testing that's going to take place. I just wanted to throw something out. We asked about testing for lead and mercury, uh, PFOS, PFOS and any, uh, and, um, turnpike contaminants that might be in the area. And they said they might be able to do the testing. No guarantee. It, it all depends on how money goes and how much testing they do. But all the most of the major testing is targeted for the mud flats. So with that, any questions? Uh, Joe, yes, I have a question. The criteria that they use for water quality, I said, this is not a, this is not a, uh, 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 commercial, actually, let me put it, this is not a swimming pool, number one, I mean, Nauk Harbor, we yep. have a shellfish, we have shellfish beds, yep. we have, we have uh, algae in the water necessary for shellfish consumption, yep. so, so the criteria of what we require in a harbor is a little different from what perhaps might be down in the Blue Lagoon or something like that, you know, this is not, it's completely different, so what is the criteria, what criteria did they use, I mean, we should they be they have their own criteria, John. And, and, and I, have, I have a problem with that. And that's why we're getting poor grades. Correct. And, and I pointed out to them, I, I said, you can go to any of the shell fishermen around here and you want clear water. And the shell fishermen absolutely and positively do not want clear water because it stunts the growth of the shellfish. Hmm. And, and instead of shellfish growing to harvest size in three to five years, you're now looking at five to eight to 10 years before they can harvest shellfish because the abundance of food just is not there. So the question or the answer they gave you was what? That this they is didn't. not- Of course they won't and they won't. No, and, and, and the big thing is when this is discussed with the public, we have to let the public know that there are absolute flaws in first of all, having a grading system at all. I don't think they could see me. You know, it just, it, it, as a former teacher, I'm offended by it because well, you have to be able to justify your grades and they can't. They well, said, you know, they have set yeah, criteria yeah. that they're looking for. And other than that, it's just, um, um, they see the numbers and they're not looking at anything else that might contribute to it. 
And one of the issues that's going to come down from Save the Sound is they're, they're pushing for uh, getting rid of impervious surfaces. And I asked Peter, I said, what do you think is a major cause of hot, the warm water? He said, well, it's got to be impervious surfaces. I said, Peter, the last two years, we haven't had any rain runoff. So how is the hot water going to get into the harbor? Well, it's got to be the impervious. I mean, this is, it's obvious that this is the next buzzword section, and we're, we're going to get hit with that next. And Joe, and I've looked up the criteria that they've used that these, you know, the group uses for, uh, for measuring water quality, and it's a pristine lake. If you look at the quality, it's a pristine lake. We're not a lake. No. And, the, and that's what I find prob problematic with what they, how they judge Norwalk Harbor. Absolutely. So, absolutely. You know, and I pointed out, there's over 64 rivers and streams that flow into Long Island Sound just from the north. And I don't know of any one of them that is pristine, and especially after a rainstorm. So now you're making judgments um, of this body of water. And I said, he said, well, you, you're, you're contesting the data. I said, no, you're collecting the data. I'm contesting how that data is being used. And it, it it, it, it's just, I wish we had more time with the public to let the public know how to read this so that they understand where we are, because sometimes it makes us look like we aren't doing anything. I mean, we're trying to keep our finger on this. If we, um, have, a, if we have things to publish, we have, a, we have a Facebook page that we can, we can use. But I don't know that we're, can, we're going to solve anything in, in, in this forum. Um, no, in this discussion. So I, no. I think we need to move on with our with our meeting. Anyone have, have more questions for for Joe? Thank you. Thank you. Um, public comment. Uh, Amelia, would we have any uh, people? Yep, we have some attendees. So anyone who's attending the meeting, you can use the raise your hand button at the bottom of your screen, and then I'll give you um, permission to speak. Ready public comment, and then um, I'll give them a minute or two if anyone wants to speak. Yeah, still no hands raised. Um, so I guess there's no public comment for tonight. Thank you. Let's uh, then we'll move on to uh, approval of the uh, January 25th minutes. I'll make a motion to approve as amended by, I you know Dr. Pinto had comments. I, I had second. comments. I'll second that. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Minutes are passed. Um, is there any new business that anyone has? John, did you want to? Yes, I'd like to bring up some new business. We had an application submitted by our harbor master for position of deputy harbor master. And uh, so he has made a recommendation of an Owen Lee, and I have his have an application here. I'll send that out to all the commissioners, but I'd like to request, and that's based on also some of the uh, requirements that the state used to have, but I think we should still hold true in our uh, request to have two other names uh, submitted uh, where we have the right uh, being a commission with a bona fide harbor management plan to make a recommendation uh, on who, you know, we would have as first, second, and third choice as far as the, you know, position of deputy harbor master based on the credentials that we review. So uh, I'd like to uh, suggestions from the floor if anyone wishes like to put a name in for deputy harbor master, to have the resume, and uh, we'll review their qualifications for next meeting. So we're being tasked with finding a. a, a, a we have, we have one. Yes, we have we have the Mr. Owen Lee. As I said, I'll send out his yep. his, his his application here. Uh, he's recommended by Mr. Lavallo, but as I said, in in keeping with the um, state previously that we've done, and that includes even what we've done for the harbor masters, submit three other uh, three names total, and it's certainly up to the governor's response to uh, to uh, choose 
but they usually go with the recommendation of a commission. Right. Do we, publicize, a, do we publicize this job opening? It's it's not a job, Laurie. It's a position, you know, by the state. <laughs> okay, got it. Thank you know, just a, just a recommendation that I know you'll probably do this, but I, I think the other two people we ought to run by Arbor Master Lavallo because he's got to work with them. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Lee is uh, has been recommended <clears throat> by by Mr. Lavallo. He's worked with him in the past. No, I'm I'm familiar with Mr. Lee. I'm talking about two other ones that you're going to. Yes, think. well, that 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 would certainly come forward. But anyone has a right to submit names of someone that they feel would be able to fit that position of deputy yeah, harbor. Yeah, the, the harbor master Mr. certainly could be involved with that uh, the recommendation and selection of uh, candidates. That's correct. That's right. Mr. Lee is an officer as well. Is that correct? Uh, Police officer. That's correct. He, he is an officer in the police department. That's correct. Uh, so uh, any interaction that I've had was always peaceful. Uh, uh, good guy. So um, I wouldn't have I a problem. We, we can we'll get the we'll get the letters of recommend. I'm sorry, resumes, and then we can certainly discuss it as a commission. Thank you, John. Um, before we, we, I, I see. Is there any new other new business? Uh, uh, just about that, we should we should have that in place. Those those resumes by next meeting, though, and let's let's get a deputy harbor master appointed as quickly as possible. Well, we summer's we've coming. Talked about that. That's correct. We've talked about that because Mr. Laval certainly can use some assistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jeffrey, can I mention something? A new development with respect to old business. Um, we we have a a um, an approved grant for the street end public access study uh, that that is not well no we we have we have an approved grant but we don't have the money um, and so we're still waiting to, for the allocation of the funds and uh, as you know uh, it was not put on the bond commission agenda in December although the port authority asked that it be on the agenda uh, the January meeting of the bond commission was canceled and Friday's meeting, this coming Friday's meeting of the Bond Commission has been canceled. So, um, and of course, this doesn't just affect us, it affects seven other towns with pending grants. So maybe it's, um, we were waiting through the last two meetings that didn't happen. Maybe, maybe now we should think of, of writing a letter to the Office of Policy and Management uh, requesting su continued support for the SHIP program and, and the uh, allocation of, of the grant that we were we were awarded but we don't we were not provided with, with the money and who will do that how would well, that be done i guess that could the chair do that and, and i could do that craft if a letter to some... the office of policy and management that's who we were advised by the port authority to contact uh, you can help me with some words i'll, I'll do yeah, that this we'll, week we'll we can work on that yeah yeah um, I have one piece of new business, and it's an assignment for all you, all of you folks before we adjourn. Um, if you could just shoot me an email when you have a chance about, and let me know what committees, uh, committee or committees you're on, and any committees you'd like to be on. Um, and I will, uh, so I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure we have a good a list of that since we've been through COVID, we've kind of all kind of fractured off in, in, in kind of different directions. So I, um, I would that would be in, good information to me to, to know um, exactly what the committees are now. Um, Chris McDonald, did you have anything about the Amistad to update us with anything? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an update. We we met again last week um, with Discover Amistad. Um, so and and um, oh, was somebody from the no uh, the fellow from Jerry Tony could not did, ended up not calling in from um, uh, the Seaport Association. But so the Seaport Association, so, the, so, so we're, we're, we're getting, we're, we're narrowing down the dates for um, the, the visit. We're currently looking at September 7th through the 16th or thereabouts, it may, it may vary a day or two. So that from before the, from uh, the Wednesday or Thursday before the Oyster Festival, through the Oyster Festival weekend, and then through the following week and then departing sometime um, after that, probably that weekend, they have, they have another date in Greenport, New York on um, the following week. Um, 
we the, the schools are uh, the school systems on board. We're prob they're probably going to um, be presenting the educational program to the eighth graders. Um, so the the weekdays during the day would be would be set aside for um, the school trips to um, to come and 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 visit the Amistad. Um, I've spoke to Gary Wetmore. He's going to support us with um with a barge to so that we can raft the Amistad off the off the city dock. Um, um, I started, so I've, I have a call into the Coast Guard. I want to find out what the, the process is for. So, so, so if we do that, the, the vessel would actually sit um, partially in the in the in channel, the, in the channel, um, in the deeper water there. It's still 125 feet wide there. So there's there's still plenty of room, but you know, obviously we have to get permission and we have and they have to notice mariners and all that kind of good stuff. So so that so I'll take care of that. Um, and we'll, we will we do plan on using the, the, the city dock. I, I reached out to, to, to Bob Stowers and, and and I'll be writing to him just to sort of a, a formal request because so during the festival, the the Seaport Association actually has full control of, of the Veterans Park dock because it's within the festival grounds. Um, but then the week after that, so I just want to, you know, because we'll be occupying the dock, I want to make sure that I, we fully have their um, uh, buy-in on all that. Um, so the next, the next phase is, is, um, is fundraising. I think we, they, you know, we have a target of $15,000. Now the schools will end up paying a good portion of that because there, there's a fee for the educational program. Um, we, you know, we, we made, we, we budgeted some money for this. We've asked the Seaport Association to contribute as well. Um, and, um, so I'm going to start working with the Amistad people have, they've already started writing us into some of their grants, but that's, a, that's probably an ancillary thing, but, you know, they have a lot of, um, language that they use to sell their program and their, and their organization. So I'm, I'm obviously going to piggyback on that. I'm not going to try to redraft, um, verbiage on, on what they're about. Um, so if anybody has any ideas about, um, local local business or local corporations. I mean, we're you know I think we're going to be looking for things in the five five hundred thousand two thousand um, dollar range. That's what I'll you know that that's I think what I'm going to ask for in the appeal. Um, chasing a hundred dollars at a time probably is is probably probably more effort than it's worth. Um, but that's yeah, that's where that's where we're at. So we're you know how, we, we how does the, the how yes. do you uh, vision of money flowing for uh, that, that gets collected to Amistad or how does that it's just a uh, it's not sponsored by the Harbor Commission so I, is it go right to Amistad or, or some of it will go right to Amistad I mean um, I mean us in the us in the schools are co-sponsors of this so I mean um, yeah some of the money could flow through us if I don't know that that's something we should discuss. I think uh, have a little conversation about amongst someone other than just you and me, uh, about how we would do that, what the mechanism would be. Yeah, I mean, the best way we would have it to go straight to, straight to Am Amistad. Um, and that's, I mean, okay. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Hey, Chris, this is Robert Stowers. Hey, I do, uh, I do have your request, so <clears throat> over and uh, back to you. Okay, well, I, I didn't actually. I, 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 we spoke, and I, and I was waiting for this meeting yeah. to find out who the chair was going to be and all that, so we could, okay, um, and and bring it up at this meeting. So, um, I'll, I'll put that. I'll put. I'll send you an email in writing, and with yeah, the, whatever you need, let me know. Yeah, with the dates and all that. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Is there a motion? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. I'll be reaching out to you all in the next few days. So I look forward to talking. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.